Go to Brent, my good friend here, who doesn't have particularly good news no. from the business desk. No, the former U.S. Fed chairman now saying that the global financial markets that they have not been this bad since World War II. This is the former. Yeah, Alan Greenspan. Uh -huh. So, um, I mean, it's serious when he comes out with that kind of plain language. You know, from Asia to Europe to the U.S., investors unloaded stocks in a frenzy on Monday. It came on the heels of another interest rate cut in the U.S., which analysts say is more proof that the U.S. economy is in a crisis. The banking sector was shredded after J.P. Morgan bought Bear Stearns for just two dollars a share. Analysts are now saying openly that financial markets have not been this close to collapsing since the Great Depression. Are you taking me? Are you asking me if I'm trading? Traders in London and other European markets struggled to keep up with the frantic pace of the sell-off, following the lead of Asian exchanges. In New York, trading opened with slight gains, but then shares started heading south. One stock that was up was J.P. Morgan. The financial giant is set to take over one of its biggest rivals, Bear Stearns, for a bargain price of $270 million, some 150 million euros. That's just 7% of what Bear Stearns was worth on Wall Street just last Friday. The investment bank has been crippled by liabilities of some $30 billion and looked set to become the first major insolvency of the credit crunch. To help make the acquisition more attractive, the U.S. Federal Reserve said it would provide J.P. Morgan with up to $30 billion to cover the deal. U.S. President George Bush has defended the Fed's controversial intervention. Institutions are strong. One thing is for certain, uh, we're, under challenge, we're in challenging times. But another thing is for certain that we've taken um, strong and decisive action. The Federal Reserve has moved quickly to uh, bring order to the financial markets. But further dollar injections seem to have accelerated the fall of the greenback, sending the price of gold and oil to record highs. And let's get reaction from Wall Street. Jens Korda is standing by at the New York Stock Exchange. Jens, talk to me about the panic factor right now there. How severe is it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you have the feeling that the mood is, uh, is uh, that we almost see some kind of resignation down here on the floor um, of the New York Stock Exchange, um, even if the markets were holding up uh, rather well in general, but especially financials uh, got under uh, fire. And um, if you look at it, $2 a share for Bear Stearns, an 85-year-old institution here on Wall Street, one of the biggest uh, brokerage houses uh, here um, in New York, and just $2. I mean, that's almost a slap in the face if you uh, consider that the stock was worth 30 bucks on uh, uh, Friday. So uh, rather dramatic uh, developments um, uh, here in New York. We are also going to report um, Moody's is cautioning on Lehman Brothers, its share falling 35 percent there. Is that the next bank that's, that may go under? It could be, and it's not just about uh, fundamentals. If the trust isn't there, I mean, then those banks are in deep trouble. I talked to some traders um, asking them, so what do you think? Who might be next? Are there other banks next? And, well, the short answer is um, nobody's safe right now because if there isn't trust, if those banks aren't getting any uh, fresh uh, money or uh, liquidity, then those banks could share the uh, same uh, fate that we saw with uh, Bear Stearns. So I wouldn't put my, my hand in the fire uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, Lehman Brothers. I mean, this share is, is uh, really uh, under a lot of pressure. I mean, who's going to put his hand in the fire right now, Jens? Uh, ben Bernanke certainly is doing apparently all that he knows to do right now, and he's still not getting much respect, is he? Well, uh, some traders uh, are talking in regards to uh, to the Fed chairman. Uh, they're saying uh, clown Bernanke. So that is a, a pretty uh, tough talk, and that shows that a lot of people on Wall Street have their doubts if Bernanke is doing the, the right uh, steps um, uh, right now. Uh, chances are uh, pretty high that the uh, Fed chairman will cut rates on Tuesday by a hundred basic points. So wow. one percentage uh, point. Uh, that's uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, tough. And that is uh, one reason, by the way, why the dollar is uh, still under a lot of pressure. Yeah. Okay. Jens Korda from a very troubled Wall Street force. Thank you very much, Jens. <laughs> Well, here in Germany, the DAX index dropped to its lowest level in 17 months on Monday. Financial shares raced towards the bottom. The electronics giant Siemens saw its share drop the most in 18 years after issuing a profit warning. 
Siemens is involved in some major projects building power stations, trains, and IT systems. But its performance in these areas has been weaker than expected. And that's what prompted the profits warning on Monday. Traders in Frankfurt went into panic mode. The value of Siemens shares fell by 17 percent, reducing the company's market value by 14 billion euros. Since Peter Loscher came on board as CEO nine months ago, Siemens has seen its market value shrink by 37 billion euros. And that's despite promises that the company would see a sharp upturn in both turnover and profits, both in this year and the next. Experts now believe, though, that the latest profit warning is probably a sign of worse to come. Yeah, Siemens aside, let's take a look at how deep the bloodletting was for the entire market. Let's go to Frankfurt, where we're going to see the DAX hit of the day there, ending the session more than 4% down, 61.82. The Eurostox 50 index of Eurozone blue chips was also down almost 4%, 3,431 was the number there. In New York, shares were up and down all day as investors came to terms with the low value of that J.P. Morgan Bear Stearns deal and, of course, the Fed's recent emergency moves at the end of trading just a few minutes ago. The Dow edged back into positive territory, making up on those losses for the day. 11,972 was the final number. And on currency markets, as you see there, the euro still climbing against the greenback, now going for $1.5744 U.S. cents.